15 left. been one part of his game left. that has excelled perhaps more than any other here it is the serve Rob isn't it yes just added a couple of miles an hour to it really been mixing it up nicely oh. he comes into this match having won 84% of points one behind left. the first serve but perhaps more importantly Points one behind the second serve, 58%. And his average second serve speed, 100 miles an hour. And that's mighty good numbers. Game not done. Yeah, you compare that to, to Schwartzman's average second serve speed, which is just 83. First game. Well, keep it. A BDI on both those numbers because they're so important. You know, you serve well, you play well. The big advantage for Nadal is the number of free points he gets on his serve, especially that first serve. 50% of his first serves unreturned. In stark contrast to Schwartzman, only 23% of his first serves don't come back. It's a big difference. And if you're not getting free points against Nadal, you have to work so very hard. Diego from the back of the court to, to gain any advantage. But saying that, Schwartzman's never been shy of hard work from the back of the court. Open a couple of years ago. Schwartzman was the only guy that year to take a set off Nadal when he won in 2018, and the match actually lasted just shy of four hours that day. That's incredible. And that, incidentally, longest match Love that Nadal 30. has ever played at the French Open. So, I mean, that's unbelievable, right? And he's played a lot of matches there. <laughs> he's also won a lot of matches pretty comfortably there. And the fact that Schwartzman could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him like that, very impressive, Nick. Well, but his real strengths lie. No returns to well, Rob. Where else do his core strengths lie, short? His backhand is world class. His ball striking from the back of the court is unbelievable. We were courtside for that win that he had over Nishikori in Rome. Best win of his career. And some of the shot making, the defense, the way he's able to turn defense into attack is off the charts. The only problem that he has Here's is the, the fact only. that he doesn't get three points on serve. When he comes up against a guy like, you know, Rafa or somebody else who's holding serve pretty comfortably, it makes life very difficult for you. So to have carved out a career like he has already and be ranked a career high number 11, it's jaw-dropping stuff, actually. He does play with a slightly longer racket. Oh. 
And those car misses cannot be part of your repertoire when you're taking on Nadell. You know, that's like a free point for Diego. Three shots. talked about Nadal's return position of the second serve how he changed it up he is looking to be very aggressive off that second serve return understandably so given the lack of pace that the Argentine has each other well. Schwartzman's actually spent some time in Mallorca with the Rafa on a couple of occasions. He's been down to his academy when they've had opportunities of breaks in the season to train together. Let's press it. It was a cool gesture when they played each other in 2017 at the Monte Carlo Masters. Yeah, another match that was straight sets, but for a four and four, took a while, Nick. Uh, yeah, after the match, advantage. Nada. he asked Rafael. If he could have one of his match shirts as a memento for the battle that they just had. Posted a picture of it, was very proud of the fact that he'd got a lot of sweat off of Rafa on a clay court that day. Oh, well, he's seen a couple of those. And we can see what the game plan yes. is. He knows what it is. You've got to go hard cross court with that backhand to Nadal's forehand. And of course, executing it for three plus hours, not easy. Novak well, Djokovic has uh, written the blueprint for that. Of course, you've got to show enough no, variety. No, no. But Nadal defends much better off that backhand side than what he does off his forehand. His double-handed backhand, I think, has been one of his most improved shots in the last 18 months to two years. He ropes that thing now. Always looking to get off the to the front foot. Ten here, Nadal. World number one in this corner, of course, Carlos Moya. I mean, what's the chances of having two number Let's ones see. and Grand Slam champions from the island of Mallorca? I mean, it's unfathomable, right? 
Schwarzmann. Often made the comparison at that small island producing a Grand Slam, two Grand Slam champions and world number ones with the Williams family. Now there's Ben still a big tennis fan. We always see him at Indian Wells every year. Probably about the same height as Diego, but sitting in Rafa's box. Of course, the Williams story is yes. beyond belief. Having multiple Grand Slam champions and world number ones in the same family. But, uh, the island of Mallorca must be second, maybe, Nick. I'm trying to think of anything else that might even come close to that. Asked him a question. The population of Mallorca there, no, no, what have you got? Just over 850,000 is the population of Mallorca. Mm. I don't even think that compares to Compton. No. I mean, let alone LA. Incredible. Both those. Just what the Spaniard wanted. Schwartzman came at him with Nadal quite a bit. And leads by two games to love. Yeah, for Nadal, a set. He's off to the perfect start. Well, that was great court positioning from Rafa. Staying nice and tight to the baseline, not getting pushed back deep. You've got a couple of that backhand cross court with the, the linear one down the line. Schwartzman not able to make that final one. But it's been a good contest so far, even though it is two zip in Adele's favor. Some seriously good ball striking. Found the backhand down the line on that occasion, did Diego. In a good season, of course, the first title of his career on this surface coming in Los Cabos a month or so ago now. On the grass this summer, really for the first time. Yeah, played well. Queens and Wimby. Match points. Let's not forget that to beat Berrettini at Wimbledon. Three of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that puts that result to even more perspective, given how well Berrettini's done here. Thirty, 
for the large part on a half court this year. He's been using the one out wide, but it's interesting to note that actually so far he's gone up the tee a fair bit on the ad. Knows how effective Schwartzman's back end return can be. Argentine can feel a little hard Nadal done by. Leads by three games to love for a set. 16 minutes in, Nadal out to a three love lead. He's only ever lost once at the quarterfinal stage here, Nadal, and that in fact was the first quarterfinal he ever played. Please take a seat quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Both players are ready. Thank you. to think about that and give me a second or two it was actually the first quarter final he ever played in his career here Evening. Can I ask the year, Nick? Mm, 2006 it was. 15. It's the player who was actually back coaching here this week. Nadal at his very best. Magnus Norman. Mikhail Yuzhny. Won seven straight quarterfinals since then here. Mikhail Yushni. Guillermo Canyas bottom right there. And it's Manu Ginobili, if memory serves. What a basketball player he was for the San Antonio Spurs, if memory serves. Hey. That's what a team he was part of under the leadership of Tim Duncan. I think that Spurs team was one of Sam Walker's top 16 teams of, of all time. Great book if you haven't read The Captain Class. There's uh, Guillermo Canyas, fellow Argentine. Started Nadal like an express train here. Schwartzman was actually asked in his pre 
post-match press conference what he's got to do today. And he rather joking. He said, I've got to hit every line. Well, he wasn't joking, was he? Something you can do, though, is go to usopen.org. There's plenty to see there and do. You can do a bit of shopping if that's what you uh, would like to do. Merchandise, T-shirts, caps, towels, outerwear, collectibles. It's all there, usopen.org. Go and have a look. Today. Cella's back in was pretty good too. The dirt baller, wasn't it? Cella. Oh, yeah. He seemed to have consistently been able to produce, not produce is the wrong word, consistently have players over the years, the Argentines, haven't they? It doesn't matter what decade it's been. Big tennis culture down there. Sports culture, as you yeah. said, as well. And Guillermo Vilas, Love back Vizzi. in the days, 70s. Alberto Mancini, I remember him in the 80s. Of course, in the 90s, uh, the likes of Coria, Canyas, Zabaleta. Gaudio. Mm -hmm. This today, but, uh, there was a young Argentine who beat the number one seed in the boys' juniors today as well. Did you see that? Shintaro Mokizuki losing out. No way. I watched a couple of matches today, but Shintaro was a given for me. Alejandro Lavalin from Argentina, beating the Wimbledon junior champion today. Something of 14. a reprieve somewhat here. Just a bit of room to breathe on anything else for this guy. This. is challenging the ball on the left center service line. The ball was called in. And the guy's good enough as it is. Does he have to get the outside edge of the line? 30, 40. What makes them Mr. so Schwarzman good? Mr. has two challenges remaining. Charge. 
Good stuff from Schwartzman. Couple of errors to work with at last for him. He's on the ball. 4-1. Nadal leads by four games to one for set. Well, that's all right. Fifteen left. Sad and jest, but it's a bit of truth to it. That's about as close to a free point that Schwartzman will come to tonight against Nadal on the serve. He's missed it. He doesn't miss too many overheads. Yeah, mum and dad can't believe it. Last time they saw him miss an overhead. I think God was a boy. And whether it's out the air or a bounce smash, normally ruthlessly efficient. has given in this one despite the call and this guy has won eight of the last nine Nadal points leads by four games to two for a set it's from a big family of, uh, four siblings does diego was actually named after of course the the rather famous footballer they have from that part of the world or if you come from the uk infamous footballer yes Shh, don't mention that. I think Peter Shilton is still waking up in sweats from that day. <laughs> With geometric precision. Love hitting. What a two shot combination. That was also a great example of what he does so well. He may be deep off the return, but it's his movement off the ball. Anything just a little bit short, he'll be up on the baseline. Each of those three balls he struck incrementally started to move further and further inside the court. Diego back into the point, but how's this for vision? Like the way he's pushed forward into that shot to give it additional underspin. And he has got the Argentine fans in full voice. Thank you. Love 
Forty. But on the brink of getting back on serve. And it is just raining down winners off this guy's racket at the moment. Small in stature, but big in heart. Three chances to get back on serve. Please, ladies and gentlemen, don't make any noise before the first serve. Thank you. A little unfortunate. He was in a good position again, wasn't he? What about the reaction from Nadal? I mean, he's down 40 love, but he's just sent a message with a vamos to the other side of the net. He is the master of psychology. getting inside the head of his opponent there. Shuts out in the opening 20 minutes. The last 17 has been all about the Argentine. What an impressive comeback here. We're back on serve. New box place. Nadal leads by four games to three percent. Sterling stuff from the Argentine. Undeterred after this man's electric start. Three successive games. approach I mean that's Edberg execution we've seen a full array of shots from Schwartzman look at this in the last fifth last 20 points Diego's won 15 that's some serious momentum Nick that's not like Nadal's playing poorly no and we highlighted how well he's been serving as well Nadal this tournament Nothing phases Rafa. Just so good at thinking about the next point. The only point that matters to Nadal is the next one. It's the only one he can influence. And he understands that concept almost better than anyone else. If there was one trait I could teach a young tennis player, that would be it. So difficult to detach emotion from the previous point that you've just played. Forty-fifteen. 
then of course within that you actually want to highlight your positive emotions but then suppress your negative ones Admirable stuff. We know he's capable, that's for sure. Oh, he has, Genzel despite the head-to-head, -head, of course. Ron Nadal pretty close at times in their seven meetings. He has bounced back in great fashion here. Yeah, and if you weren't with us earlier, Nick, with a little nugget there, just highlighting that, that match that they played at the French Open last year that went four sets. Schwartzman, the only player to take a set off Nadal, was the fourth longest match that Nadal ever played at the French Open. Just testimony to what a great contest that was. Hello, Vitting. Nadal has never been within one major of Roger Federer. And if he were to win here, of course, he would be exactly that. It would be 19 to 20. It's never happened before that he's been that close mm -hmm. to Federer. Looming very large in the rear view mirror. to say, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't ever remember seeing that from Nadal. There were plenty of smiles on the Nadal camp's face early on in this match. Those have disappeared quickly here. We heard those chants, didn't we, 12 months ago with one Martin Del Potro's run to the final. slow to react. That could go down as a, one of the most important unreturned serves of Nadal in the set. And especially so, given it was a second serve on a break point. Oh, 
Edwards missed it. He hit the most beautiful return, didn't he? Yes. I mean, Nadal uh, tactically is so good, but also his net coverage. Look at this, how he squeezes Schwartzman into error there. Nadal has won that point because of his presence at the net. Following the line of the volley initially and making it as tough as possible for Diego. that said enough is enough. Nada. Opportunities to close out this game. Adele's parents still get nervous, Sebastian and Anna Maria. I mean, he's won a lot, Nick. It's not like he needs this one, is it? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some things never change. you feel this ninth game Out. Oh, that was the return and once again like that is the and presence and, and the off the ball movement of Nadal that is so intimidating to opponents he wins points that he shouldn't we saw it on the break point when he was at net and we'll see it then again will tell you all you need to know about the intensity in which this opening set's been played. Nadal in front Nadal once more. Five, 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 five. 
Please, ladies and gentlemen, take your seats quickly. Players are ready. Thank you. 53 minutes this opening set. Schwartz on serving 4-5. You know, those years that Sebastian was with him, 2012, March of 2012 to April 2016. And in fact, the exact number was, uh, his ranking was 382 at the time. And got him to 57. as well under pressure I mean Easy this on. is a Schwartzman at his very best and again it's that off the ball movement isn't it yeah the moment he's hit that backhand cross court deep to the Nadal forehand he knows Nadal's going to go cross court and he stepped up the court giving himself a little bit of extra time and then boom Let's press it. Oh, you don't get too much change Let's out of those approaches from Nadal. So good at making you play, especially off that backhand side. So good at getting that first shot below the heart of the net, forcing you to volley up. Always a battle behind his second serve. Nadal. Contrast to how things have been going this week on second serve for him. Of slice. 30, 40. So tough to volley. Okay. When a ball is struck with this much slice, it naturally goes down off your racket when you're trying to volley it, so you've got to give it more height. Mm -hmm. Diego just hasn't calculated that. No, and as you so rightly said earlier on, he's so aware of Nadal's recovery skills off the volley. So he's trying to cut it a little tighter. Set point here. Sets one at the start of set two, but Nadal will begin the second. Fifteen. 
critically as well, above anything else. He seems to have full trust in his body right now, doesn't he? I mean, I think last night we got evidence of how quickly he can change with Roger Federer. Yes. He's that much older, though. But at the moment, the body seems to be in A1 shape. Uh, and no taping around the patella either. That's always a good sign. I think things panned out beautifully for him when he won in Montreal, Nick. It's a little unlucky for Diego. He's had a good break after Wimbledon. He's come back. He's won his first tournament back. It's enough match time for him on the hard courts in North America. He leaves Montreal feeling great about himself with another Masters 1000 title and comes comes here completely refreshed and the body feeling good, not overplaying. Let's not forget that. 14, 15. They, of course, leading into Australia. the other day, his intentions are not to play a whole lot First leaving New York either. You find out exactly what he means by that. Lever Cup certainly on his calendar. What else is remains to be seen. Of course, when you've been playing as long as Nadal has, you get several exemptions, Nick, and it's, it's worth reiterating that to people who don't follow the tour year on like we do. Of course, the Masters 1000 are mandatory, all except Monte Carlo. So eight of the nine, if you don't play them, it still counts as a zero pointer on your ranking, one of your best 18. But if you played 600 matches, you're allowed to miss one of the Masters 1000. 12 years on service to the tour is another criteria. And if you're 30 years of age, as of the 1st of January of that commitment year, you can be exempt from another Masters 1000. So Nadal qualifies in all three categories. So he missed to Cincinnati Hello. due to fatigue. Won't count against him on ranking. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does want more time out. Decide to skip Shanghai. Mm. Seemed to be the obvious one, wouldn't it? 15 on. Spend a little bit more time on that new boat Ooh. that he's purchased. You seen that thing? Yeah, it's not inflatable, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. Need a pump to blow that one up. Mm -hmm. It's a wild one, though. Thirteen, fifteen. 76 foot. That was uh, an Italian built MCY. So, you boat enthusiasts out there, you might know what that is. 
It's named Beethoven, actually. Forty fifteen. Schwartzman hitting all the right notes there. Excuse me, the seventy six footer is the one he's about to sell. Upgrading from 76 feet. Hmm. Oh. Ah. Game is right home. Looking at the average rally length of set number one, one we highlighted Game these two have had some lengthy Second affairs. Set. No surprise. The average rally length of that opening set, six shots. Retesting. Schwartzman actually looking for his first ever victory over a top five player tonight. And 16 against those elite five. Well, the Argentine covered it and almost kind of overstepped it somewhat. Nadal Three holes by to two start games the to one second set and by one set to love. In what years have we never been to the Arthur Thank you, before? Ladies and gentlemen, the players are ready. The vastness of it all takes your breath away. The friend come from uh, London this week, you couldn't believe it when he walked in mm -hmm. here. A little bit like big sky Love country hitting. where I was 10 days ago. Yes, I heard. It's good fishing up there. Mm. Right on the uh, Montana Idaho border. What a stunning part of the world that is. Like you suggest, it was the scale of the beauty that really puts you in awe. Love the trouble here now.
against Van Adal is challenging the call on the right baseline. It was called out. Even Schwartzman's not sure about this one. Well, it should have been. 15-13. I think the reaction suggests even he thought it was remaining. closer than that. Good friends, these two. Vital enjoyed it as well. This is a daughter's good tennis players. They would have enjoyed that from start to finish. Some good doubles this year, isn't he, as well? He was a finalist in Madrid. I think the Dominic team at memory serves. 40, Challenging the call on the right baseline. Ball was called in. Good memory, Nick. Of course, they made the finals in both Buenos Aires and Madrid. How's this one? Oh, -ho. it's one of those line licking forehands. Yes. Always tastes good. Mr. Schwarzman has two challenges remaining. This ball. Yeah, well, this is uh, one to put in the portfolio of Schwartzman. Astonishing shots. like that where you could do with a free point on serve you know step up give it to Matteo Berrettini out wide big bomb serve an ace get a free point so he doesn't have that luxury just one ace this evening for Schwartzman Players. He might have got away with this one, but the dial just too strong. He's in a different category, isn't he? A perfectly executed backhand pass, so strong on his right leg. And remember, he's predominantly right-handed, so the feel on that backhand and the strength that he has is probably better than most.
ball may have been a touch no, no, fortuitous no. in the early part of the exchange. But once he got a hold of the rally, Schwartzman was always in trouble. Nadal leads by three games to one, second set. Oh, it's amazing. One traffic gets to dominate out of his backhand corner. That's when he is so dangerous. Just sees the angles. So much better from that side. Able to hurt you so much more as an opponent. Task in front of this man just grew somewhat. Sat in a break. right there a blue by you that's what that was as you can see that edges in front in the winners count Just right back at you. You've got to love it. Love the team. Don was talking about how early Schwartzman, he thinks, sees the ball sometimes as well. I mean, he has to see it early, doesn't he? To be able to time it as he does half because mm -hmm. he picks it up. And I think that that's where matchups certainly help. Some, some guys' game just fits nicely you have a sixth sense as to where they might be hitting the ball now, yes he's got a losing record against nadal but a lot of players have but he has given him a good run for his money on a number of occasions so it's definitely something about nadal's game that he doesn't mind i think that would be the best way of putting it no one likes playing against rafa Novak Djokovic, I would say. He's had his number over the last couple of years. We saw that clearly illustrated in the Australian Open final earlier this year. First time ever in a major final. Nadal was unable to win a set. It's a loose one. Schwartzman with a chance to bounce back and respond quickly here in the second.
Yes. How often have we seen Nadal do that on big points? Just goes big down the middle. Opponents always looking for the slaughter out wide. It's just a third ace for Rafa. First in this set. Couldn't have come at a better time. He's used all 23.78 meters of the court there, Nick. Seventy-eight feet, if you prefer old money. The ball was called in. in with number 21. We'll ask for the chase review, but it is not going to be again. easy viewing. Nadal. An hour and a half in. Nadal wrestling control. Set for Nadal one. leads by four games to one in the second set and by one set to one. Mr. Schwarzman has one challenge remaining. Any seat for now, please. Thank you. Actually, of course, Nadal's wedding in a month or so from now. Definitely not playing Antwerp, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unless he's pulling a Philip Kohlschreiber. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Was Philip played in Kitzball, didn't he, last year on the same day he got married? I mean, is that an unforced error? I think it's a big one if you ask me. Fifteen old. Good chance, then he'll miss the Asian swing. I mean, he doesn't even have to travel far for his honeymoon. He could just honeymoon in Mallorca, right? I mean, it's a honeymoon destination. It's so beautiful there. Yeah. Save a couple of euros, right? Not having to travel too far. 15 30. shot will go down as the winner but it's that one there that really sets up the whole point it's one of his least preferred shots but when he's playing well it causes so much damage was a call Some style. 
Nadal leads by five games to one second set. And are you kidding me? This guy is absolutely mainline in set number two. Of course, we saw Monica Seles here today sitting in the president's box. And there was a big shout out to a gentleman on Twitter by the name of Nick Curious, <laughs> who said that Seles was Rafa before Rafa came along. And I thought that was. A wonderful description of what she was all about. We talk about teenage prodigies. Let's not forget Monica Seles won eight majors no. while she was a teenager. And uh, I don't think that will ever be repeated, certainly not in my lifetime, Nick. Incredible, Nick. The laser like focus that she had again, you know, it's not too dissimilar to this guy. The ability to compartmentalize to bring it every single point, time and time again. hit the same spot four or five times in the last oh. couple of games with that four and up the line it's oh man it is just unbelievable the shot making from both these guys this evening the vast majority of these points being finished with winners or at least forced errors come back in the opening set this would be uh, that much more unlikely
reaction says it all, doesn't it? Can't believe he's yes. missed it. Backhand of his is so reliable. Schwarzman showing us the variety of skills he has. So for second chance to break here. Absolutely magnificent. Oh. Straight nitro. That's what dead is. Medvedev have instantly confirming his qualification. I was reading on the ATP website this morning. Yeah, any guesses as to who the first three players were to qualify for the season any no. championships, Nick? <laughs> Amazing. It's quite astonishing what Rafa, Novak and Roger have achieved over the last decade and a half. Rafa yet to win it. Let's not forget that. And I think fitting that Daniel Medvedev has joined them, given the season that he's had. Second set. This guy would certainly be a nice addition, wouldn't it, if he could qualify for the top eight? Could we see a Zenyatta like finish for Grigor Dimitrov? Goodness. Wouldn't that be something? He's sitting at 25. I remember, he has one there before. Afternoon today. Practiced around about two o'clock in the heat of the day. Mr. Nadal is challenging the call on the right center service line. What was called fault. Oh, we need a triple zoomer there. Just to make sure that one was indeed out. Ben Stiller. One of many celebrities 
in the house tonight, sitting in Rafa's box. I think if memory serves, he might be a, a fellow Mr. lefty Nadal tennis player. Has one challenge remaining. check with that LA connection there mm -hmm. there's only one man to check with of course TG absolutely Interesting, isn't it? Are we heading the same way as the first? 15, 13. With us in the opening set, Nadal leapt out to a four love lead. Schwartzman won the next four games and had two break points to go up 5 4 and serve for the opening set, but missed his uh, opportunity. Good as volleys are. Oh. He hasn't come in a whole lot tonight, but when he has done, as always, it's been effective. Five from six in the fourth court. Comes in on his terms, doesn't it? And even on the odd occasion when he has to uh, dig a volley out from a shoelace's neck, it's good technique, good feel. the break for Schwartzman. And he's made it! Would you believe this? The Argentine on the comeback trial once again. Let's close the gap in the second here to 5-4. Schwartzman 4-5. It is out of this world, Nick. There's not many players that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their backhand to Rafa's forehand. 
And they're smiling. time in a while we have seen the, the forehand of Nadal break down to that degree that wasn't even close to going over Not the first time in the match we've seen Schwartzman dictate a period of play like this Second set. Stoked their passion as well. A handful of Argentines certainly making themselves heard please ladies and gentlemen thank you Oh, once again, how the faces of the dark camp have changed in the last 20 minutes or so. That's cheap. He doesn't miss second serve returns too often either. The staple diet for him. Just didn't quite seem to get behind the ball for once. The kind of return happened when he had a chance to serve for the opening set if he had broken it for all. Nadal is challenging the call on the left center service line. Ball was called false. Oh. 
Yep, that one didn't stay in the air long enough to catch Second a piece hook. of the line. Mr. Nadal has no challenge remaining. and hefty blows. Fourteen, fifteen. Once again, it's the foin up the line that gets Diego out of position. Loves playing out of that backhand corner. It's backhand cross court. Such a proved shot. Francisco Roy begging for more of the same. Affected Nadal's timing. Well, we did tee this up as a match that potentially could be fairly long, given their history. So far, it has followed suit. Mr. Schwarzmann is challenging the call on the left far sideline. Ball was called in. It's good. So Nadal yeah. stops the bleeding Nadal. in this second set. He's moved ahead again. 6 5. Nadal leads by six games to five, second set, and by one set to love. Mr. Schwarzmann has no challenge remaining. These two guys epitomize that this evening, Nick. This really has been an entertaining couple of hours. to come at him a little harder. You can't give Nadal two bites at the cherry. Thank you. He's put so much into this. Of course, he was broken in the 10th game of the opening set. How intelligent was that? Love. Oh, that was sumptuous. 
Such contrasting shots, weren't they, Nick? He knew exactly what was coming, didn't he? Please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Three set points for the Spaniard. Certainly can't blame him for taking it on. Seemed to be a bit of room up there. Third and final for now, set point. Two sets played Seven out in a very Nadal. similar fashion. Nadal leads by two, two sets, sets the Spaniards have secured. <laughs> An Italian, it is. Lieutenant who awaits in the semi-finals. Matteo Berrettini. Neil Monfils this afternoon in five sets. level for probably what 18 months Rob fair to say yep play his first major of that Berrettini until he was 21 plus change in that serve pattern tonight he's mixed it up to the forehand of Schwartzman a little more Just keeps bringing it, despite the fact he's down two sets to love, despite the opponent on the other side of the net being the toughest of them all. What a competitor this guy is. I think this one, one thing this match has certainly showed us as if we needed any reminding is the
Joseph's down incredibly fit, you've got to think. Oh, too true. You know, I was just having a look at those numbers that we were talking about, 14, narrowing it down 15. just to the majors, where Nadal is 203 and 1. When he's won the opening two sets, mentioned the, the loss against Fanini. That means the chances of Schwartzman winning tonight would be about half a percent. Mm -hmm. But of course, in the words of Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber, so you're telling me there's a chance? And I think that's how Diego views it. Yes. I think we can whisper to Jim Carrey, it's minuscule. <laughs> Time soon. Yes. Saw what happened last night with Federer's injury, of course, as well. Mr. Schwarzmann is challenging the call on the right baseline. Ball was called in. It's not a confident look. He had the best view of anyone, though. He was right on top of it. He may have just wasted a challenge. In fact, game he has. Nadal. First game, third sense. The trainer here, possibly. Maybe he's asking for some more towels. Choice. Taking the ball on the rise, trying to take the ball early, and once again, his execution of that particular play. Mentally impressive.
Oh. Well, he was looking for the serve and volley. Sadly, he only got half the piece of the puzzle in place. It was a ripper. Argentine. One game all for ten. We calculate the total points played here. Just shy of 160, an average rally length, as we mentioned, of six. Talk about the physical side of the game and back during the 25 seconds to recover between points. Intensity with which the ball's being struck. He's a hardcore fan. There's a fair few people commenting on the fact that Nadal is not wearing wristbands, Nick. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, the only reason why I'm thinking he might not be wearing it is because when, when they get very sweaty, they start to slide up your hand. Hitting the ball so vigorously. As you say, because it is so humid as well tonight. 
taking in a bit of uh, absorbing a fair bit. How's that for a response to the time violation? Diego with the uh, wristbands on both left and right wrists. That's great yeah, tactical no, no. acumen. Who was actually the personal physio of Roger Federer for quite a while, wasn't he? Stefan Vivier coming out now, back working for the ATP, just treating the dial at the change of ends. New balls. And the wristbands are back on. Yes. Left arm with a little bit of a, a rub down with something. The dial's picked up the wrong racket by the look of things as well. He's already had one time violation. So I wonder if uh, the Chiapas is going to give him another one. Clock's been frozen, I notice, on one second. Please. It's given him a, a little bit of leeway because it's a change of racket. Suggesting to us that Nadal's uh, spinning on average 32 seconds between points in this match versus uh, 26 for his tournament average. Vietnam. He's been made to work a lot harder tonight, hasn't he? Got to even rehydrate when you're sitting in the stands. Chilich gave him a test for a while. Different sort of test, though, wasn't it, to this one? Out. Lucky. 30, 30. seen that so consistently 40, this evening. 15. His ability to take the backhand on the rise, those short swings that he has. I mean, the timing he has is just so pure, isn't it? His attitude. Two Showing the dial that he's far from finished here. Speaking about the importance of hydration, I had to chuckle to myself earlier today, Nick. You follow a bit of uh, college football. Florida State faded badly on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Season opening loss to Boise State. Okay. And, uh, the coach was uh, examining whether Thank his you. players were properly hydrated enough Thank or you. not. And uh, suggested we can't leave it up to our players just to do it. We've got to force them to hydrate and take care of themselves. You'd think that they were kids, right? I mean, isn't that pretty basic? Seems to be. Oh, 
Love the coaches now telling you to stay hydrated. Get on it. Mm. I was actually listening to an interview with Martin Blackman this morning, who is, of course has a very prominent role here at the, the USTA discussing how they're Data analytics into their programs of junior levels. Yeah. IBM have come on board and tracking everything. There's virtually nothing they can't find out about patterns of play of different players. There are five or six guys here, I think, working looking at yeah, the data. That is great. Love all that stuff, but let's never forget the basics. Sometimes we can get caught up with all this data and analyzing stuff but it's data doesn't teach you how to compete does it no too true do the basics well you'll always be in business Yeah, I mean, that's an unbelievable shot. He's got no time to hit that. The decision making is is instantaneous. There's a half a chance for him to make that down the line, hitting over the highest part of the net. And it's his least favorite shot as well on that forehand side. Yet he pulls it off time and time again. Serve and volley there. Shaking the arm out again, isn't he? It was actually the other arm he was shaking out. 14-15. I think he's used that shot well this tournament, falling down the line. Of course, it's all relative when I say it's his least favorite shot. Just stretching that wrist back there. You see it, Nick? Good spot. A bit of cramp, possibly. Nice. Such a brilliant half oh, volley. Nadal looking to keep the points Nadal a little shorter, it seems. Three games to two at third set. by two sets. And three two. He treated the left arm. He's now treated the right arm. Seems to be the inside of the elbow, doesn't it? Rafael Maimo. This has been a slow start to the game. Just what Nadal would have wanted a couple of cheap and quick points under his belt. Devastating. 
just sensing a bit more urgency from Nadal, aren't you? The serve and volley points at the tail end of his last service game. Yes. Stepping up the court big time here. Yeah, it feels like this is a sprint to the finish, doesn't it? And he's going to leave it all out here. 15, of course, 14. by playing here, he's going to get the fewest, or shortest amount of time, isn't he, to recover of all the semi-finalists. Comparing it with Daniel Medvedev, who, to be fair to him, does need a little more time. <laughs> Everything's worked well, no, isn't it? It's had to tonight because he's to played an opponent who has caused him plenty of trouble. Black games away now from a another semi final. 33rd semi final, it would be at a major for Nadal. It will also be a very first meeting with Matteo Berrettini. Schwartzman the pace to work with. And his challenge is wilting here. Argentina has been so good throughout the course of this match. But Nadal now just a game away from reaching the sense. And it's been a battle tonight. Two and three quarter hours. Schwartzman has made him work mighty hard, but he's serving now at 2 5. Five minutes, isn't he? Whether that's injury induced or. Yeah, there's an urgency to him. No doubt about that. Discomfort, perhaps.
stuff wasn't it wasn't it just ripping and ripping within two points of victory Standing contest from really first ball to what looks like it might be the last. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yeah, it's a quality seven, finish. Not, uh, two sets to left. For the Spaniard, who books his place in a 33rd Grand Slam semi-final of his career. He is the overwhelming favourite to take the title now here in New York. He gets the better of Diego Schwartzman in a fine contest. 2047, Nadal is through and through. And it never gets old. That will to win that he has is something special.